Hey guys, Mr. Nicole here, and this is the first episode of my new series called Coding for Scrubs, or Coding for Dummies, if you don't want to be called Scrub for some odd reason. <coughs> Gee, I wonder why. Um, this, this episode, we're going to be looking at, since it's the first episode, we have to learn the basics, and I'm going to be showing you the Discord chat, well, Discord group chat, whatever you want to call it, that I've created for specifically for the these tutorials and such, and some of my friends are already actually are actually already in it, if I can speak, sorry. Um, it's right here, and this is the invite link if you need it, I'm also going to be putting it in the description. And then if you head over, after you join, it'll tell, tell people that you joined, just say hi or something, whatever you want, just don't be mean. That's one of the rules actually over here. You're going to have to go to the uh, announcements uh, chat channel, and then you're going to look through this. You're going to read through all of this, and some of this I'll actually be putting in the description because we're going to have to be, we're going to actually be looking over these things today which is uh, information on how to set up uh, your little coding setup. And yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, also, the rules are right here. If you're seriously annoyed or irritated or pissed off at your code or not working, uh, at, your, at your code not working, take a break. Feel free to ask for help in the help channel, which is right here. No one's really asked for help. We just, we really just talk in general chat, but that's, it's gonna get a little more crazy when we have a lot more people in here, which I'm planning on getting more people. Um, don't be mean to others, even if they were failing really hard with their code, haha. <laughs> you were that bad at one point, so, so was I. If we can't help you in the help channel, always feel free to ask a question on stackoverflow.com. That's a website that I'll be going over, actually. Um, <clears throat> feel free to set your channel notification settings to only notify you when you get uh, mentioned by the at symbol, when you get tagged. And always remember, have fun while you code. That's one of the main things. Like, if you're not having fun, just don't do it. Don't bother the people. Don't bring your angry attitude into here and start getting mad at people. And to mute this uh, server, you would hit here, server settings, and then uh, there should be a, hold on, should be a mute uh, right here. Uh, notification settings, you can do only at mentions or all messages. Uh, I have an all messages messages because we don't really get that many messages yet. But I'll set it to only at mentions later on if I need to. You can see that and then you hit done. I'm not going to do that though right now because I want to keep it how it is. Alright, so yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, once again, the Discord join, uh, channel, chat channel, the Discord group joining link will be in the description if I remember. Hopefully I do. And if you don't, if I forget, then just you can still look inside. Just uh, you can just move back and then look at it. All right. So you can either, if you, if I'm going too fast or something, these links will all be in the Discord chat and the announcements channel. Yes, you have to join Discord. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be like that. Um, this is Adam. Pretty much what it says to me. It's a hackable text editor. Uh, it's pretty much my favorite uh, code coding program, coding software right now because. It has support for like non-native files like .tpl file, which will be, it's like a little more advanced, but they're like basically template files by Smarty, which is a template file handler. And I actually needed that to code a little template that I was making for NamesMC, which is a form software. Uh, that's very later on because that's some very, very complicated crap. And yeah, so you're going to hit this or other platforms if you have an, an, another platform and you can get them here. Uh, based on what you need, um, Mac, Windows, Windows, just download from the link over there. Uh, yeah, just find the right version. Uh, I already have it, so I'm not gonna. I already have all these programs, so I'm not gonna download anything. Uh, you can hit download Windows 64 bit installer to see what version of Windows you have. You can just do this. You're gonna hit your start menu. You're gonna right click computer, hit properties. And then over here, your computer specs will come up, and it'll say, like, for example, I have 8 gig of RAM, 64 bit. I have 64 bit. 64 bit is recommended and, like, optimal for this because you're going to be going through some complicated stuff, and you don't, like, 32 bit doesn't support as much RAM as well as some other limitations that I'm not going to be talking about because this isn't about that. This video isn't about that. Um, yeah, uh, so, yeah, after you get Adam, you're going to install it. You're also going to want to register over here as well. It'll say, like, login or sign up or something like that. And then, yeah, when you register on this, you're also going to want to go here, go in the announcements channel, and then there should be, right here, add on package setup. You're going to hit, after installing, open and hit Control shift p So let me open up Atom.
All right, Adam finished starting, and now we're at the main menu. I didn't actually realize this is the main menu because there was no files open. I guess they just exited last time when I finished using it. And we're gonna go back here and look at it. So after installing it, open it and hit Control Shift P. Control Shift P. And you're gonna look up uh, package, and you're gonna scroll all the way down. Settings view, install packages and themes, which is the last one right here. You're gonna double click on it, and this should come up. And then you're gonna go here. And then it says search for settings view and so okay yeah that we already did that. Go there, search multi cursor and install the one that's by Do Hosera uh Monty. I probably butchered that a little bit. I'm sorry, Hosera Monty or whatever I'm just not gonna say it anymore. Uh multi cursor. So multi dash cursor. And we're gonna search for it. Search, I just hit enter. Right here, the first one I already have installed. It'll show you some. It'll look like this. You're gonna hit install. Make sure to buy uh, Odera and uh, Monsi. And uh, yeah, you can disable or enable it. You can pause it. It's like temporary disabling and uh, enabling again. And you can uninstall it. But yeah, you're gonna want it. Basically, what this package does is allows you to do things like this. Or oops, control N. Uh, so I can do this. Hold Alt, Alt Shift, hold on, Alt Shift. Alt shift there you go there you go my bad so you hold alt and up and then you can like select multiple lines so it's like a little derpy because i was doing it wrong right here right here right here and then i can hit this type hi youtube and yeah stuff like that this is really helpful when you're uh trying to format code that wasn't formatted by the original developer on um products that you're actually like editing and like working on trying to understand the code of it is very 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 hard to understand this stuff when there's like thousands of lines of code and you just you just can't see anything i actually ended up formatting like almost every time i do a project i always like format i always that's the first thing i do as soon as i open up a file and i see that this is actually the file that i require by using like control f and then finding things like hey like yeah, and then I, f I try to make sure that it's the right one. I figure out because it's really, really confusing to figure out which part I need to edit for what I'm trying to do. For example, if I'm trying to theme something, I gotta find which one allows me to theme, which one's actually the theming portion, and that requires me to uh, format the thing so I can actually understand the code. And yeah, that's why I got this multi cursor thing. This is a lot easier to do in uh, Notepad Plus Plus, but the thing is, Notepad Plus Plus is still my favorite other than Adam, but Notepad Plus Plus doesn't have as many like it's not it doesn't support as all file types and I, I really 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 need and recommend uh, Adam because it has um, it has the color coding features on like files that aren't normal files like txt files and stuff like that that are usually supported by no notepad plus plus it's also supported here but things like tpl files they're not supported on notepad plus plus, notepad plus plus so it just looks like normal text files and no color formatting like html and you'll see later on what i'm talking about but yeah it's very helpful to have the color coding and also when you select a little bracket like this uh it'll it won't look like this because this isn't the right type of file it should be the php or html file but it's not it would like select and show you where it's ending and that's very helpful when you have big uh big chunk of code. Alright, so now we're done with uh, setting up uh, Atom. Alright, now we're gonna go on GitHub. What you want to do is register on GitHub, and it should come here and then uh, register. Feel free to follow me if you like. I have some actual pretty neat, in my opinion, uh, contributions and projects of my own, like this. I made this. You can also find these on spigotmc.org if you're in the Minecraft type. Uh, <coughs> Um, yeah, so you're going to register here, you're going to register on GitHub, make sure you register, and what you want to do is, uh, you're going to have to make a repo, but we'll go over that later. You're going to go to the link that's also in Discord, and it's the git bash download. You're going to download the run for your version. I'm going to be supporting in this tutorial, in this entire series, Windows, because that's what I have, and I prefer Windows over anything else. And, uh, well, servers I prefer Linux, but that's another uh, subject. So yeah, I'm going to be showing how to use Windows for everything, but as most of these, if not all, actually support other platforms, like even ZAMP supports other platforms, I do believe. <clears throat> so yeah, you're going to download this, you can install it, set it up. If, you, if, you, uh, if you're familiar with Spigot and use my uh, project on Spigot for like the Spigot server auto creator and you actually ran it, then it'll already have bit ba get bash installed, but if you want to check that you have it, just type in git bash. 
and it should come up with these two. And yeah, that means that you have. <coughs> so we can exit this, and now you're gonna go to the other link that's also in Discord, and it's an exam. Uh, you can scroll down and find the correct version for your computer. I have Windows once again, and you're gonna don't download either of these. These are older versions of PHP. We don't want the old ones. We want the latest one. I have 7.1.1, and that's what you want because things that uh, like things like how to explain it functions that you can do in older versions of PHP might be uh, deprecated in newer versions of PHP like such as 7.1.1 and I don't think this is the latest version, I'm pretty sure there are some newer versions but whatever uh, XAMPP doesn't support it. XAMPP is like an easy way to set it up it's like for noobs and you're gonna download that as well and install it and FreeCodeCamp is something that I recommend you to uh, look at and try out obviously I'm not very far into this because I'm really lazy and I don't want to do this, but FreeCodeCamp can actually give you legitimate like certificates for real jobs that people actually look at and they are like uh, looked at like how to say it they're like recognized by the law like they're real they're not just fake online ones for like oh yeah you succeeded this year's certificate of completion of, of doing nothing for a full year this is gonna take a long time it's like a couple thousand hours or something like that and yeah, clearly I only have, I'm not doing much because I only have 24 brownie points, which is how many tasks I've done. One part run brownie point per task. This is a task right here. I don't want to do it because I'm lazy. Right. And some of the frameworks that I was talking about in the intro video, if you didn't watch that, go head over to it and watch it because I explain what I'm going to be showing in this tutorial and such. And uh, this tutorial series and materialize CSS, materialize dash CSS over right here. This is also going to be in Discord. Um, this is a framework right here, framework, uh, based on Google Material Design. If you look at Google ma oops, Material Design, it's actually a very, very pretty and beautiful design. It is much, it's pretty much, if I can speak, what Google uses on everything, like their basic uh, template theming stuff. Like, uh, like for example, Google Docs, if you've ever used that, or Google Slides, they have a material design. It's, it's a lot of boxy shapes and um, stuff that looks like this, and they have shadows. It looks really neat. They have fabs or uh, something, action, action buttons. Uh, facing or front action buttons or something like that. I forgot what they're called, but whatever. Yeah, if you want, you can read this, read up on this. I'm not gonna have a link on this. If you just look for uh, Google Material Design, and yeah, so that's what this is based off of. And I'll be going over uh, how to use this, and then also I'm gonna be going over what the more commonly one is, more commonly known one is for like noobs and stuff. Bootstrap. Bootstrap is the like the go-to basic thing to use on any websites it's super duper common and even has like themes for it like look at all these cool themes but thing is I, I prefer materialized CSS because it's just prettier in my opinion like look at this this is beautiful even gives like in-depth tutorials on how to use all the components that it offers and bootstrap does too but uh, like I said I like the other one better uh, I like materialized CSS better because it just looks prettier and yeah, I'll, go, I'll be going over that. Alright, so let's get into the GitHub tutorial on how to, to set up and use GitHub. Let's, so let's make a new repo. Let's go to my repositories. So, hold on. Let me just delete this because this is an old one. So yeah, you'll be seeing how to delete this. You go to settings, delete this repository, and then... There you go, I'm, lazy to, I'm too lazy to type it in and delete it. Alright, so we're gonna create a repository, ignore what just happened, that's just how you delete it if you want, if you want to know from the beginning for, so for some reason. So you're gonna hit your profile, right, and then you're gonna see these tabs, uh, hit repositories, feel free to follow me, I, do, I have some pretty cool projects as I said earlier, and we're gonna hit new, and then let's just call it, uh, coding for, hold on, Coding for scrubs uh, to or whatever. Coding for scrubs. The repository for my coding series, which is called Coding for 
of scrubs. Okay. Alright. Yeah, we want to initialize this project with a readme so that we can just... Um, readme is basically the information... Oh, you'll just see. Oh, wait. I probably shouldn't have done that so you can see. Whatever. You know what? I'll, I'll just redo that without doing that. Alright, here's how things would look differently if you did not initialize your project with a readme and I actually recommend this because it's a lot easier to understand for noobs who didn't actually use this. Uh, you're not gonna just ignore all of this stuff. This is what actually matters to you. So we're gonna start using this, but first we have to set up where we want to use this. So I'm gonna go here. Uh, see, this is where it is. After you've installed XAMPP, this folder should be here. And then hdocs is the folder you want to uh, go to. There's going to be some files in here. I just moved that to a folder titled XAMPP. These are the files that would be usually in the hdocs folder because I just want to organize things. And I made a folder titled Git Repos, and I recommend you do too. And then you're going to hit Git Bash here. Let me just do this because I don't need this anymore. Git Bash here. All right. Now you're going to copy this. It said copied. You're gonna do git clone and then paste the repo. Oops. Git clone. Oh, what am I doing wrong? Am I not? I'm not pasting. For some reason, it's not pasting. Hold on. Technical difficulties. Git clone. There you go. For some reason, it wasn't pasting. I don't know why. Alright, paste. Enter. Now it says coding, uh, cloning into there. And warning, yeah, you appear to have cloned an empty repository. Clearly, yes, because we haven't put anything in it. It's clearly empty to go here. And now you're going to want to exit that, or if you don't want to exit that, you can just do this. You're going to find the directory that you did, that you called it. I called it coding for scrubs. So I'm going to do uh, cd coding dash for dash scrubs. If you have spaces in your title, uh, spaces in the folder, which you, you won't because. Um, uh, which we call it. GitHub doesn't allow spaces unless it puts dashes for spaces. But if you're directing to a folder inside of it and it had spaces in the name, you would just put quotes over here and over here, and that would direct to it either way. Uh, CD coding for scrubs. There you go. And let's go here. Now we're in this. Now we're in this folder. But I don't. The easier way to do this is just. Navigate to the folder here and then get bash here again. It's not that hard. Right? Now we're gonna have the README manually since we didn't before. And uh, if you wanna have this enabled, you see how mine says .txt, you're gonna actually want to have that. So we're gonna go here, hidden files and show hidden files and folder. Click that and then you're gonna hit it's gonna be default here. You're gonna hit show hidden files and folders and drives, and then also um, uncheck the, it's going to be checked by default, but uncheck hide extensions for known file types, and then you're going to hit apply. I already have it, so I'm not going to do it. So we're going to hit new text document. This is how you're going to make any file that you want. Um, let's call this readme.md, and you want to capitalize readme, and also .md is a, basically, it's pretty much like a Word document, but for developers that they use on GitHub. So let's use this. And then it's going to say this, yes. Now you're going to want to open this with Atom or Notepad++. I'm just going to open it with Atom. And to do that, you're going to hit Open With. Other programs. And then make sure this is checked. I'll use select like program, blah, blah, blah. Atom, okay. And if Atom doesn't come up in that list, maybe for some reason it didn't come up for me, you're going to have to add it manually. And uh, I can show you right now how to add it manually. Open with, choose default program, and then hit browse. So like if it didn't if it didn't come up in this list right here, other programs, make sure it's not in there. Then you can hit this, browse, and it should be in Atom right here. Uh, no 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 no, it's in local. Uh, Atom. And then bin. No, not bin app 14 and then atom.exe that's what you're going to want us to choose but i already have that set up so i'm not going to all right so we have our readme.md opened and since we're using github it can tell because 
since we enabled hidden files and folders, we can actually see there's a hidden folder titled dot git. And do not delete that folder. That tells this repository that t that tells this folder that this is actually in fact a GitHub repository, not just some random normal folder. Do not delete that. And because of that folder, uh, Adam, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, it can actually tell you uh, what's going on. If you right click it, it'll tell you information on what's going on and uh, like that. This is not some comments, uh, comments, commits, whatever you want to say. I say commits uh, that have been committed to GitHub pretty much. And I'll be showing you and explaining what committing is and all the other structures. So let's have like a this, let's explain this. This is going to be what's, what pops up on the bottom portion of our GitHub repository. Uh, I'll show you that after I, up, after I finish it. So this is the repository where I'll be doing all the coding demonstrations for my coding, for my you coding series called coding for scrubs feel free to look at and contrib look at uh, let's see feel free to look at the code in this repository and also contribute Enjoy. Oh. Enjoy. Alright, control S to save. And you see it added a line, that's just what Adam does, it likes keeping lines. Watch if I remove it. It's, it's gonna bother me. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't like more than one empty line either. Yeah, it just kind of fun. Alright, so we can exit this and you can see six commits have not been six lines in this new file have not yet been committed which means that these are not being tracked by github and you can actually see that if i refresh the page clearly i'm in the code tab but there's nothing here there's no code even though clearly we did in fact add a readme so why is that you say well since we have six lines of uncommitted code this technical code technically code that's what it thinks it is since github is made for coding six lines right here see one two three four five six little indicator right here so we can exit this now, we don't need this anymore. We can actually do git status, making sure that we're still in the right, correct git repo, which is right here in mine. I set this, and the reason I put it here is um, because XAMPP lets me actually run from here and actually view the website. And this, you see readme.md, it's not actually being tracked. Untracked files, use git head file to include uh, what will be committed. Now, you could do git add readme.md but that's so tedious especially when you have tons of files that you just added what I like doing get add dot dot means every single file is untracked let's do that get status if at any time I'm going too fast feel free to just pause the video and stuff and if I'm when I'm code when I get into coding you know, feel free to look at the repository and stuff I probably won't be updating it uh, other than during the video uh, you can see changes to be committed. It means that it's being tracked now. You, you saw it said untracked and it was red. Now it's tracked, but it's not committed yet, and it's it's green because it's being tracked. Now what you have to do is git rm cache. No, 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 don't do that. That's still on stage. Never mind. We're gonna have to commit it. So git commit, and whoop, I don't like the very unintuitive committing window where I'm not even going to show you how because I don't even know how to use it and frankly I don't care it's too complicated for me I don't want to use it so what I do is dash a meaning that's a flag dash a is a flag dash anything is a flag and there's specific flags these are some I don't know all of them but these are some that I use dash a means select all files so that if we have multiple files that say new files that we've already added now it says change to be committed and it has a whole long list of files we could also just do the name of the file, so we could do like readme.md, but we don't want to do that. Readme.md, but we don't want to do that because that's really hard. We're going to do dash a to say all files, and then dash we're going to do dash m to the message and get rid of that pesky weird GUI thing for coding for showing how to commit. I don't, I really don't recommend it. Make sure that you have dash m. Just 
just trust me. And you're gonna put two double quotes. Oh wait, no, two single quotes. And you're gonna type your message in. And you'll see what this. I'll show you what this message does. As I'll show you where it comes up on GitHub uh, after we finish doing all this. So we're gonna say what you like doing. And this is actually a tip from my cousin who actually got me into all this coding stuff. You're gonna write in like uh, future tense. I think I think it's the right one. If I can English right now, uh, future tense because like. It's, I don't know why, but it's just something that they do in this. I don't even know. This, it's just what they do on GitHub. So I'm gonna say create readme.md, and you're gonna wanna. I like having everything lowercase except for whatever it needs to be uh, uppercase, like in file name uh, that have file, uh, uppercases because I just like keeping everything uniform. I don't like having a weird capital. Uh, it's just my preference. I don't. You don't really have to do that. All right, now we're gonna finish committing, and it says one file changed, five insertions, which means the five lines that we added, five lines of messages, the code. And now we're gonna do git status again. You don't have to do git status every single time. This is just an uh, explanation of how to do it. For example, all you would have to do is git add dot. If you added a new file, git commit dash a dash m. Uh, single quotes and inside the single quotes message and then uh, git push which is what we're about to do and that'll finish it up and then I usually do git status afterwards just to make sure that everything got finished rightly and now since we can see your branch is based on origin master but the upstream is gone use git branch unset upstream to uh, fix up nothing to comment working through clean don't do this this doesn't matter we're gonna do git push and basically what that does is it's going to upload all the files that we just worked on to the GitHub. And if since I'm already logged in, it doesn't ask me for uh, my login info for Git. But it will ask you, I don't know if it's earlier or right now, but it will at one point ask you to give you... It'll A little, win, little window will pop up. I saw it on my friends the other day. Uh, it said it was a piece of... It was a little interface a pretty slick looking interface saying github and log in with your github info and that's why we need to have the account so we're going to log in and then it's going to finish and now it says it created a new branch master it's not going to say that every single time but it just happened now because we didn't have any branches now let's do git status again and now you can see everything's perfect your branch is up to date with origin master it says your branch is based down over here but the upstream is gone see now it's up to date we can also do git pull if multiple people are working on this and we can get updates. It says already update, up to date because clearly no one else is working on this or updating this. So now we can go to Chrome and now if I refresh, I'm hitting control R by the way, you can see that everything's updated. And you know I said I'll show you where that message came up. And this is the latest commit right here, the latest commit. And that's the name slash number of the commit. And it says two minutes ago because that's when it happened. And it says create readme.md. That's the message I set for the commit. And you can see our message came up here because it's the readme.md. And if we go in here, we can actually also edit from here. And then we'll also be able to commit from here. I don't prefer this at all unless I'm not home or something. I recommend using uh, the normal thing with like git bash and stuff. And yeah, so now let's do something like pulling a so pulling someone else like say I want to work on someone else's project like say for example for this example I'm going to be using uh, my friend Habib's uh, little repository where he, I'm teaching him how to make a website and this was one of the main reasons of making this tutorial series because uh, yeah I'm showing them how to do this yeah so we already finished this I'm gonna what was I talking about oh yeah I'm gonna fork which is meaning like I'm getting my own copy of the, another repo. These things are called repos. I'm not gonna start it because it's not anything. Right here, there's a fork button. But there's no point forking my own thing. So let's go and I already follow him and I already set up everything up for him. Triple Fire 99 is him. Feel free to follow him too. He's gonna help me on some stuff as well because I'm. He wants to help me and he's like very interested in this stuff and he wants to help me code. Uh, fork hit this button. And we're gonna fork it to my account. Okay. This isn't very big, so it shouldn't take too long to fork. I like that little animation. And you can see um, right here. And the reason why we had to fork, and instead of just uh, going to his account, and then do instead of just going to here, and then hitting clone, and then cloning this, because you could you could do that, but if you edit any file, you can't commit because 
he, unless he gave you specific permission to your GitHub account, um, you can't actually commit. So if you're working with your friends, I recommend that you just ask them to give you permission to their account and then you can create different different branches like each one for each username and you all merge your codes uh, with pull requests that I'll be going over as well, but whatever. Just what I do. And now I, you can see repositories should be here. Habibu I get Habibu.io updated five days ago. You can see that it's forked from triple five ninety nine Habibu.io. If I go here, then it'll show his one. It says my portfolio website was his description. Let's go here. And then now since this is my fork, I can actually edit it. You can see there's a settings page, whereas with his one. I don't have the settings page because I don't have access to it and there's no add a readme button because this is actually my local copy, well not local, locally stored on github on my account. So now what we can do is clone this one, copy it, just go here, do this, and then we're gonna hit get back here, get to clone, let's hope that paste this time, yep, just clone it, alright, now I'm going to hubby view, get back here, Get status just because I can. Get pull just because I can. All right, now we can. That's it. We have access to the files now. Now whatever we do here will not actually go into his repository. In order to do that, let's look at this. Let's let's give him a readme file. Um, since he doesn't have one, I'll actually help him. Readme.md. Let's edit this. And since I already set it to open with Adam, I can just double click it. I set it to default and what we're gonna do here is since that was his description we'll just put that as his um, readme as well my portfolio website that's gonna be what's gonna be in his messages in his readme and now we can do get status again and you can clearly see we didn't have to add get add dot get commit dash a dash m quotes Create readme.md and get to push and then get status after it finishes. And then you can see it's updated. Now, if you go here, it's readme.md. But here's the thing if I go here, there's no readme.md. This is his version of it. Now, what I have to do in order to give him permission, like give my thing into my code into here. I'm gonna have to do this. Go here. This one is his. Pull request. New pull request. I'm gonna copy. Uh, hold on. Gotta choose some. Um, hold on. What's going on? Oh yeah. Compare across forks. You're gonna have to do this. Enable that. And now we're gonna do base fork. Compare to head fork is is the one that you edited. I do believe. And yeah, see if we do head fork is mine and then base fork. Oh, hold on. Compare across forks. Head fork is his. Then there's nothing to compare because trying to see what triple fire ninety nine has that my that motion code doesn't have. And that's not that's not a thing. I have things that he doesn't have, not the other way around. We're gonna go from here. It's gonna go away. And head fork is the one that we want to work that we just worked on. Now it says able to merge these branches can be automatically merged. Sometimes these can't actually be automatically merged, but for most of the time, 90% of the time, they actually do work. And you can see all the commits that I did and stuff like that. Oops, didn't, want, didn't mean to click on that. Let's create this pull request. And let's just title this uh, I created a readme.md file for your uh, repository. Enjoy. Man, I cannot spell today. It's because of this keyboard. I don't like this keyboard. It's just lower, so it's easier for me to use. And then my laptop keyboard up here. Which I kind of put stress on the arms. On the arms. Um. Okay, we can allow edit from maintainers. Maintainers is pretty much him and anyone else, like I said before, anyone else has access to that repository. So let's create this pull request. <laughs> Alright, and there you go. Now, only those with right access to the repository can merge pull requests. I don't have right access, which is what I was talking about earlier, like the maintainers and all that crap. Uh, that's why we had to make a fork of this. I'm going to be deleting my copy of this because it really doesn't matter. But whatever, this is just for the tutorial, whatever. Um, so he has right access because clearly he, he owns it 
So when he sees this, it won't say this. It'll say uh, merged merged pull request or something like that. And you know, what? I'm just gonna tag him so it actually checks this for fire and then it'll be so. And uh, yeah, you can see all the commits. And if I actually comment later on and then I do more commits, it'll show the commits after my comments. Just show like the time and stuff. And you actually click here. Something I like about these, this is it actually shows you every single, every single line of code that was added or removed from your project. That is amazing, especially helpful when you have a lot of edits. It just, when you format other people's code, it becomes a struggle for them to understand what you actually worked on. Like, for example, I worked for Alpha Arts thing and that. I was mayhem for him. He said that everything was just edited so you could even see what I worked on, really. Whatever. And yeah, when he gets on, he can merge these. And that's pretty much all that really matters. I suppose I could show you something else. Uh, repositories. This is like a really, really in depth thing. I don't, uh, whatever. Uh, Clicking for scrubs. Settings. And we can enable issues. I want to keep that. Issues is this page right here. Issues. People can make issues. <laughs> You can actually enable GitHub pages. We don't actually need that because that only allows HTML files. And we're gonna in this in these tutorial series, I'm only gonna be doing PHP files because I prefer PHP. That's it. That's my main. Re that's the only reason I can explain. PHP has a lot more features that you can do uh, that HTML can't. And uh, GitHub pages doesn't actually support HTML. That's why I put it in uh, the ZAMP folder so I can use ZAMP since ZAMP supports PHP and I can view the PHP. I can delete it, transfer, make this repository private. So I can't make it private so it seems whatever. Uh, collaborators, I'm not gonna do that. Whatever. Alright, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a very very in-depth tutorial, sorry for the video being so long. But I was just trying to do a very, very in-depth tutorial, like I just said. And you don't have to watch the whole thing. Just watch whatever parts you need. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah, you can exit this now. Uh, I'm just going to do a get status just to make sure that everything's up to date. Yep. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.